Hi designers, I'm going to show you how to set up your document for your 1920s book cover. So we'll go to new file. <clears throat> Along the top here, choose the print profile. That's going to get our CMYK settings and everything uh, automated. And then down here, we're going to change our units of measurements to inches. We're going to make our width six inches and our height nine inches. We're going to leave the portrait orientation. And for now, we're just going to have one artboard and we can title this novel cover or whatever you'd like to call it and hit create. Great. Now we have one artboard. I'm going to zoom out a bit. We're going to use our artboard tool, which is way down near the bottom of the tool bar. It's this little uh, piece of paper with the little marks on the sides in the corner. And we're going to duplicate this artboard using that same method that we use with our selection tool. Just hold down the Alt or Option key until your arrows, you get a double arrow there, and just click and drag to the left. Hold down Shift to constrain it on that X axis so it lines up nicely next to it, all right? Now, since we have our artboard selected, go into the Properties. Make sure artboard number two is selected. And we can change the name of it here to artboard two instead of artboard one copy and then go down to artboard options and change your width this is going to be your spine so we're going to change the width to two inches but leave the height at nine leave the orientation and all the other default settings there and hit ok <clears throat> great so now i'm going to slide this puppy over until it locks next to the other artboard it wants to overlap i don't want that so you can nudge it with your keys on your keyboard your arrow keys it looks like I also might have bumped it. Hmm, yeah, let me just undo a step or two. There we go. Let's try again. I'm gonna, I can only move it with my using my artboard tool. You can't move it using the selection tool. There we go, got it. Okay, good. So using my artboard tool, now I need to create the back cover. So I'm gonna click on that artboard one again and this one is going to, because our back cover is going to be the same dimensions as this one. So I'm just going to hold down that Alt or Option key, click and drag to the left, and hold down my Shift key to lock that X axis and snap it against that other side of the spine. Okay, so the reason we did it this way is because Artboard 1 is going to be our front cover. Whenever you're working with a brochure or a cover, this page is on the on the right is your front because it wraps around the book right so this is our spine and this is the back of our cover what i'd like you to do while you're working on this project is practice your layer organization so go ahead and click on your layers panel there and this layer one is going to be associated with artboard one so i'm going to uh, call that our front cover this will be our front cover layer then at the bottom of the layers panel, you can click this little plus icon to create a new layer. Layer two is going to be our spine. Then we're going to make a third layer by clicking that plus again, and this will be our back cover. So let's go ahead and put some text in this just to kind of organize this and show you what I'm trying to say. So I'll click one time here and I'll write front cover. <clears throat> we select that and make it bigger. I'll give it like a hundred and just use the characters uh, section in the properties panel. Great. Then um, the next one will be our spine. I'm going to use my vertical type tool for that one. Click one time and write spine and I'll do all caps and I can move that over there. And then I can go ahead and copy this front cover text using my selection tool. Just do that same duplicate. Um, command with the alt or option key, but I'm going to change this to be my back cover with my type tool. Oh, all caps. There we go. All right, so let's look at our layers panel again. So right now, this back cover text is selected, and I can see that it's on the back cover layer because I have a little green dot here that's telling me uh, that that one thing, that one object that's selected on the artboard is on this layer. So notice that this layer is labeled green, and so the bounding box around it tells me that's on the green layer because the bounding box is green. So let me click on spine. Spine is also green, so that's telling me that spine is on the back cover layer. To quickly put it onto the spine layer, all you have to do is grab this little green dot and slide it on down. And now, voila, it turned red because my spine layer is assigned red, and I know that that's now in the right place. 
I'll click on the front cover text. That's also still in the back cover layer. So I'm gonna just click that little green dot and drop it on down to the front cover layer. And now this one has a blue bounding box because that layer is assigned blue. How fun is that? Okay, so if you'd like, the reason why we have these artboards next to each other is because you can have elements that run from one artboard over to the next and over to the next. So it'll all kind of overlap and wrap around your book nicely. This isn't a requirement, but it is a nice touch and it's a fun place to practice that for this assignment. So maybe you wanna put in a textured background first. Let's go ahead and do that. So we can go to file. And if you have one on your hard drive, you can hit place. We can also go ahead and go to search Adobe stock. So let's give that a try together. And right here on this drop down, choose free if you don't wanna pay for anything. And then you can type in the word texture background. I already looked at this up, so it showed up in my uh, you know, recently searched items. But right here now we can scroll down and check out all these different backgrounds. So there's a lot of really nice options. Just remember to keep it you know, um, relevant to the era. So they used a lot of creamy backgrounds, but um, you know, it's not mandatory to use just that color. But don't use something ultra modern like this. That's not gonna work. Same with this, that's too, too modern. We're talking about the 20s with like experimenting with printing presses and stuff. So it's, you know, we're not gonna use a marble stone background or anything like that or a brick background. So I'm gonna go back up to the top. I'll select this first one. Um, yeah, let me take select this one here. And I can hit this license for free button and then it downloads. So this is really nice. So from there, um, I'm gonna go back into my Illustrator file and I'll go to File Place and then I'll go find that file in my Downloads folder and hit Place. And then from there, I can click and drag it across all three artboards and now it's gonna wrap seamlessly around those three artboards. So which which uh, layer should this be associated with? You can have it on your front cover since that's like your bottom most layer, or if you'd like, you can make a new layer and move it on down to the bottom by just clicking and dragging, and we can call this background. And then from there, just grab that selected background, drop it there, and then I would lock that background by clicking on this lock um, column in the layers panel there. So now if I try to grab stuff, it's not gonna grab the background. Okay, really cool. So after that, once you're ready to export your file, make sure you save it first. So file save or command S. Uh, you can save it on your computer or your um, Adobe Creative Cloud account. So I'll just click save as an AI file, as an Illustrator file. Oh, not in my downloads folder. Let me get back to my images folder for this course and hit OK. Now we have our editable Illustrator file, right? After that, I recommend that with these fancy um, fonts that you're using, that you go ahead and expand those fonts. It's going to convert the best to, P, uh, to the PDF during the PDF conversions if you expand it. It's not required, but if you ever notice that your text kind of breaks between that conversion, that this is a workaround. So you can just select all of the text and make sure that none of your layers are locked while you're trying to do that. So I just use my selection tool and I drew a marquee around it. And then you can go to type and go to create outlines. Now this is gonna make it so it's no longer editable. These are now just regular shapes with stroked out, you know, with a, a path for an outline and some sort of a fill. So um, do not go to file save because then it's gonna override your editable uh, AI file. We're only gonna do this step right before we go to save as or save a copy. Either one of those are acceptable. Then go to save on your computer or on the Creative Cloud. And from here, we're going to change our format to PDF, all right? Now here's a very important part. Make sure that this all toggle is selected because we want all three of these artboards to export into the same PDF document. From there, just hit save. I'm gonna replace it, because I you know, tried this earlier. From there, under the Adobe PDF preset, you're gonna go to 
PDF dash X dash slash X dash four uh, colon 2008. So I like this format because um, it still gives us really nice resolution in any of our raster graphics. So that background is a raster graphic that we just placed in there. And it doesn't compress it too much. It compresses it enough though that it's a good file size. It's, it's still a little big, but it's not too big. So most printing presses, uh, if you have to submit a job to a printing press, they will accept this type of PDF if they don't give you a specific um, PDF preset to download to your computer and um, assign here. So these ones down here, these are from printing presses that specified the settings that they want. Uh, so I just installed them. I imported them into my Illustrator. But these ones right here are the defaults that come with Illustrator. And you're usually safe with this latest PDFX version. Uh, I use the smallest file size when I'm sending things to a client to proof. Um, but with the smallest file size, let me go ahead and click on it to show you the compression. They downsample the, um, the raster graphics really low to 100, between 100 and 150. And uh, so you're any kind of images can look super pixelated and sometimes the clients get worried about that. So if I do have, if I'm working with a client that doesn't quite understand that that's not what the final version is gonna look like, I'll just go in here and change it to do not downsample and compression none. And I'll do that on all three of these images sections. But then the smallest file size, it'll still compress everything else and it works really nicely. So let's, the high quality print is gonna give you a really large file and sometimes people don't like downloading a file that big, especially if they're looking at it on their phone. So let's go ahead and choose PDFX for 2008. Go back to the general setting here and just make sure that view PDF after saving is checked. It just uh, makes the process a little faster and hit save PDF. Now I can look at my PDF here and I have my front cover, six by nine, my spine and my back cover, all three artboards are in one document. And that's how you'll submit your assignment.